So I've been involved with uh, open source since about 2002, maybe before. And I'm going to talk just about a small, uh, fairly unusual uh, project uh, today. Uh, basically, a couple of years ago, I ran into the problem that C++ was a very modern language with really great features. People wanted to use it, and they didn't know how. And so um, I started a project trying to figure out how to answer the question, what would you like your code looks like in about five years? And I'd like to point out that if you say, just like I do today, I think you're sort of lost. Uh, so we started a project because I find, obviously, I wasn't the only one tr uh, trying to answer that question. So I, I went with some of my friends and people, started a um, project to give a concrete, useful answer to that question. And that had to be sort of cross-industry and uh, basically a set of guidelines supported by um, by tools. And uh, it's an open source project. You can find all of the text uh, at that uh, GitHub uh, site there. And there's a small support library that's also th uh, there. You can find uh, references to it. So um, it's, it's there. Uh, basically, to, to give an executive summary, uh, we'd like to have C++ um, we can write code that is completely type and resource safe. No memory corruption, no leaks, no garbage collector, because we don't generate any garbage. Uh, no runtime overheads compared to uh, C++. Uh, and no limits or, uh, to expressibility. You can do just about anything if you stop people to do anything interesting. We will go there. And uh, I, ISO C++, obviously. I, don't want to get involved in designing a new language. It's just too much work. And we want to simplify the code, because that is a key to both maintainability and performance. And we want tool enforcement. Because if you say a set of rules, you can do this. People don't do it. People uh, break the rules without knowing it. We can't have that. Uh, this is where it is um, work in progress. And of course, if you look at that list of there, it's one of the um, uh, holy grails of uh, computing and programming, hence the illustration. And uh, so basically, we want C++ on steroids, uh, not a new church subset. And work in progress, we have a general approach, which is we have a set of guidelines, we have a support library, and we have some static analysis tools that uh, help you enforce the rules. And it's not production ready. Some is experimental. Some is mere conjecture. But it is being used in production in various places for million co uh, line code bases. So it's, it's, it's not science fiction. Um, so uh, one of the questions I, I, I am asked quite often is, why don't you just fix C++? And uh, the answer is, well, yeah, it's big and it's complicated, and we would like it simpler. But everybody wants a simpler language with just two more features. And they want a guarantee that you don't break their code. Um, this is impossible. Uh, so hundreds of billions of lines of code. I mean, I've argued with people. They say I should say half a trillion, and I don't feel comfortable with that because I can't prove it. But it's a lot. And you don't change that. Furthermore, there is a lot of legacy stored in people's heads. And you need to deal with that too. And so we can't simplify the language. We can simplify the use of the language. So that's, that's the point where I'm going to uh, tie an attack. And, and here's sort of the bigger, bigger problem. Uh, the value of a language is in its applications. There's a lot of great applications. We mustn't break them. Um, the C++ development community is about 4.5 million people. You have to train them. You can't retrain 4.5 uh, million uh, people easily. You can't even teach the teachers fast enough. You need help. And they seem to increase by about 100,000 a year. So this is a big problem. Um, so what does this to do with open source? Uh, basically, some things are suspect unless they are done in public. 
the C++ standardization is done public under ISO rules. Um, and these guidelines, um, we, we need to do them in public. Furthermore, we want everybody to benefit, so we can't have it private or expensive. And furthermore, we want to be able to everybody to contribute. The initial contributors included Morgan Stanley, of course, Microsoft, Red Hat, Facebook, and CERN. Notice Red Hat and Microsoft. That's an unusual combination, even more a few years ago. We, we had to do something like open source, so we made it open source. Everything we do is under MIT license, by the way. And there's about uh, 230 contributors. Well, I was wrong. I checked it this morning. There was 262. It's a very small number in the, uh, in the open source community, but this is a small project and it is unusual. Um, one problem we have is that with guidelines, taste is really important. That is, it is, there's, there's no science to uh, what, a, what, what code should look like. There's a lot of parts that could be scientific, but overall, when you want to say to people, uh, this is what you should try and do, uh, we need taste. And uh, people with taste don't have the same taste, and so how do you mean coherence, integrity and, uh, and of design? And for that, you need to articulate principles. And that's part of what the guidelines do. And we have to have a stable team of gatekeepers that uh, approve the, um, the, the pull requests. That's what we've got, meetings and all of that right stuff. So what is it? Um, basically, you need a philosophical framework for a, a set of rules. You can't just individually design rule after rule, looking at the language features and saying, well, I like that rule, let's ha have that. You actually, it has to have a framework. So the first thing we did was to design sort of a philosophical framework, and uh, it's fairly obvious. We want to express ideas in code, not encrypt it in uh, pointers and bytes and bits. Uh, we want to ISO standard C++, we are not doing proprietary uh, extensions and such. Uh, expressing intent, it's really nice to say, say, sort this, as opposed to just having to read the code and figure out it's a sort. Um, statically type safe, it's C++, that's the idea. Uh, compile time checking to run time checking, it's really good. We do a lot of stuff that not just has to be fast, it also has to be reliable, and for that reason I don't want errors to be found late so that I have to write an error handler to, um, to try and deal with the problem. It's much better if we can find it early. Um, what can't be checked, it should be checkable. That is, you may decide that you don't afford range checking on everything. But at least your code should be such that I can put it in debug or testing mode and then test it. Um, principles like that. Don't leak any resources, don't waste time and space. Again, it's C++. If you can run faster, we have to do better. And um, so, uh, philosophical rules are not checkable by machines. And we want, uh, we, we want automatic checking, and so we can build checkers. And so there's the lower level rules that fit into the philosophical framework, and um, they provide enforcement. Sometimes you can do perfect enforcement. Sometimes you have to rely on heuristic. Depends on the uh, rules. And so basically, the, 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 the specific rules are aimed at machines. And that those are rules like a raw pointer is a non-owning pointer. So if you have a pointer, you shouldn't say delete to it because it don't own things. Um, similarly, it points to a single object, so you shouldn't subscript it. Uh, this sort of break every traditional C++ program. However, we also provide alternatives. Um, so, this is just the proof that it's not, um, not science fiction. It's a cutout of an old um, Visual Studio version. The stuff ships with Visual, Visual Studio. Some of the rules ship with uh, Clang Tidy also. And basically, that one is catching a potential memory leak. And this shows how I would like this stuff to be done. You, you run the checker, it points to a line of code, it tells you which rule that is violated, 
it dumps you into the specification of where the rule is. You click on uh, that one, and it will tell you uh, what is the rule, what is it called, what's the rationale for the call for, for, for it, what's an example of what goes wrong if you proceed, and what is a way to fixing it. This is really quite practical. And um, there's a support library that uh, we, we, we rely on because uh, the general trick is not to tell you how to use every little low-level feature um, in a safe way. That's impossible. You soon end up with uh, hitting the uh, hoarding problem if you want to, say, prove that there's no memory leaks. You can, however, raise the abstraction level by a few uh, libraries um, that are also very efficient, and then you can uh, subset after that. That's how I get away with saying the pointers point to something, they don't own it, and they, you don't subscript them. One of the things here in the library is span. Um, this uh, is in the GSL, the guideline support library, but we uh, want to be out of business in that library by getting it standardized, and span is in, G, in, in um, C++ 20, so it will disappear. Poof, we want to put ourselves out of business. But here's a span. This is how you, uh, you avoid um, range errors. Uh, there's an array. If we poke into it with subscripting and pointers, we will eventually get range errors because people don't get it right. However, we can say, make me a span for that. And this bind together the size and the, where the elements are. And so now I can do things like a range four over it. Uh, you cannot have a range error for something that is guaranteed to be in range, problem solved. And so we have about 10 things in the guideline support library, standard MIT licensed open source code, and it, um, this one went out of business. Good, it's now in the standard. And so to summary here, uh, we want to maintain static type safety which means that we look at things like casts and untagged unions and try to make sure you don't do it. In the standard, we now have variants, so we can do without the untagged unions. And don't litter, uh, don't leak memory. We also know how to do that uh, using ownership abstractions, like a vector looks care, takes care of its elements, uh, a, a task uh, a thread takes care of its uh, operating systems uh, support. Uh, we eliminate dangling pointers, we make uh, uh, resource management implicit, and provide the static guarantees, and then there's some libraries for things that can't be guaranteed statically. And that's basically it. Uh, I encourage you to try, look at it, to try it if you can, um, and uh, give feedback. Uh, it's there on GitHub for you to, to give feedback. Otherwise, if you don't want to go straight there, send email to one of the uh, editors. Thank you.